I have been wanting to know how to make these highlighted arrows for years now, and thanks to a collaboration with Warhawk, I finally found a way. If you don't know Warhawk, his channel animates American battles in great detail, from the Civil War right the way through to World War II, so please check him out. I'm now going to pass over to Warhawk to explain his process. Easy arrows. It's like the name says, it's pretty easy to make. So if you want to get started making easy arrows, of course, you could use a tutorial file on YouTube or you can go like this. For the most part, you want to select your pin tool, have the point of where the arrow starts, like right here, showing this column advancing onto the field and then going and setting the point where you want the arrow to end. So since they'll be moving onto the field, attacking these units over here, Let's say, let's point the arrow in this direction, just showing their forward movement. So once you have that, you can go down to the Easy Arrow plugin on the side or wherever you have it. So Easy Arrow plugin on here over here, click on Create in Arrow and then Pre-Comp Layers, makes it easy to composite all together. And when you're ready, you can click on Easy Arrow. The plugin creates the arrow here. And once it's ready, you can go into the Pre-Composite. Now that I have the pre-comp for easy arrows, you can double click on that file. It brings up the arrows itself. Now, since you want to show the arrows going to the right, you want to turn off that back arrow, which is usually the tall one, which is in the back, or you can actually play around which one you want to use. So since I want to have this arrow going to the right, I want to show its animation. So I'd like to change some of the effects that it has. So the length, you always want to put at 100 or depend on how far you want to extend out. If you want it to go all the way to your other points, then I'd put at 100. Size, this all depends on how big you want to have it. So you can have it bigger, smaller, however. Usually I keep the sizes consistent with all my arrows. So it's just pretty uniform across the board, across the video, and then length. So let's say for example, if they're advancing here and then you want it to end about maybe six seconds from now. So 44, 45, put at 51. So that's six seconds. And if you wanted to go all the way, put 100. And I like to make it a little smooth so you can see it play right here and then it will end at that point of course you can go back at any time and change the direction so if you don't like that it's curving like this or playing like that you can change how fast it will reach that second point you can change direction but one thing you'll have to do is if you change the direction so if it wants to point up point down or point in another direction you'll need to update the arrow and if you do that, make sure that you uncheck pre-comp layers, because if you update arrow without unchecking this, you'll have another pre-comp inside your pre-comp, which makes things kind of annoying. So let's say, for example, I want to change the arrow and go in a different direction, go back to my pen tool, you know, drag the arrow. Let's say I want to go up like that and then update the arrow and then boom, and then I'll play like this. One thing that you need to notice is when you are working on your arrows, make sure that when you have the arrow, it's not on the edge like this, because when you go back to, let's say, where you have the arrow, it's going to be cut off right there. So if the screen ever moves down, you know, whatever is not showing on the pre-comp here will be cut off on the main screen. Of course, you can change the color. I usually leave mine as white because I like to kind of put a little transparent background on it. So let's change this back and finish it up. All right, so I have that set. Let's go back to the main pre-comp for the battle. So I have that arrow here. If I want to show it like just appear out of nowhere, I like to put a little mask, which all you have to do is click on the pre-comp for the easy arrow, click around the arrow so you don't hide any of the parts. And when you want to show it like appear, just cut off some of the beginning of it. So there I have my mask. As you can see, it's cut off. So go to mask, go to feather, put about 25 or so. And you can see it kind of appears out of nowhere. Now, as you can see, I put it too far back. So the arrow is showing. So what I like to do is kind of put a little head. So where the arrowhead's not showing at all. So when you play this time, it should appear out of nowhere like that. Of course, make sure you, however you do it, make sure it's staying where you want it. So if you're like, uh, have it, uh, have it parented to the, the camera null or the map, just make sure it's not moving like it was showing there. So now that it's parented, it should not move from its position. And the final thing that you can do to make it a little more like good looking is to change the mode of the layer. So the best way you can do for this is overlay. 
which gives a little transparent uh, view where you can still see what's underneath the arrow. And lastly is I would move it below the unit cards. So instead of the arrow being above the unit cards, it's going to be below. So just find where the bottom is. I have a lot of layers, so it might take a bit and just move it below whatever you have. When you actually play it for the official version, you can actually see the unit cards above the arrow, but the arrow is still being shown and shown which way they're moving. So there, I found the place where all of my units passed. So if I play one more time, you should have more of the transparent view. The arrows will be underneath the unit cards as they move forward to the front. That is shown in this video. That's how I usually handle the easy arrows. So I'll link the Easy Arrows page below, and thanks again to Warhawk for making this possible.